Hi everyone, this is Tom Cherry Arms with the FujiNet Project, and I wanted to do a fun video today showing a potential application of the end device, that is the network device, to pull games in from different sources, such as the HomeSoft collection on apps, Serata.online, and on the Pigwa FTP, to pull together a game disc. You know, like when we were kids. Except instead of dialing into a BBS and transferring the file over X modem uh, to, our di to a physical floppy disk here, we're going to be using the network device to transfer these files directly onto a floppy image. And if you stick around a bit afterwards, I will take and show how I put together the game box disc that will create these and stuff a few FujiNet utilities on them so that you can use them to take and help aid in this particular quest here. So with that, let's get started. We start with an empty FujiNet host list and drive slot screen here. Uh, we need to actually start our quest by going to apps. And once we're in apps, we can go to Atari 8-bit, go to the second page here, go to utils, and we can go to Gamebox. Okay, now that Gamebox is here, we can hit return twice to mount that into drive one. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our disk image where our stuff's going to go. This is a blank floppy. It's not formatted. It's not anything. It's just blank. We're going to put that in local storage here. And hit end to new. Once you get here, we're going to choose the standard single density size here, 90K, and make a games3.atr. And we're going to put that arrow down into drive two. Press return, W to mount read right. And you'll see down here that we now have two disk images ready to go. Our first is our game box that we're booting into. And the second is our blank disk image, which we've created. This disk image is not formatted. It must be formatted before use. Luckily, the game box utility calls the DOS format routine here to format the disk for us. So we can do that entirely within the menu. So with that, we hit tab again to come back up here to the host list and press option. And reboot. I must also mention here that I'm doing this uh, with my 1200XL set up in Atari 800 mode because uh, Gamebox doesn't run on XLs very well. But the same idea here that we're doing here applies to any game box, any game loader, game DOS, whatever you want to use, put these games on and to load them. I'm just doing this as an example. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, this particular program assumes to do everything in drive one. Luckily, Fujina has a wonderful little, uh, little facility here to swap disks for us to make this easier. We're going to swap disks from drive one and drive two here with each other by pressing the first button on the FujiNet on the left. Yes. Sam happily announces that we have now flipped over to disk two and drive one. And I can now hit one to format the disk, insert disk, press Y to format. There we go. Now this disk is empty, but now we need to take and write the game box to that disk so that it will boot into it. Press 2. There we go. Now the game box is part of that disk. And if we go ahead and read the disk directory, we'll see that we have nothing on here but 704 free sectors on which we can place our games. And if we look at the game directory, which is where the descriptions of each game will go, we'll see that all of that is empty. Okay. So now that's there, and we can end. No problem. We want to end because we want to go out into DOS. And coincidentally enough, I remember this program originally being in, uh, in Atari BASIC, 
And it looks like from, from here, it looks like somebody took this program, combined it all into one, and compiled it using the ABC Basic compiler. But I digress. You press. Oop. See, you'll notice right here, oop, I didn't swap the disk back for the DOS disk. So if I take and hit again, we hit select, and we wind up in the Atari DOS 2.0 menu. Let's have a look and see what's on our game box disk, first of all. Drive one, and we'll see that we have a DOS and DUP and our auto run sys, which is our game box loader, but we have a small selection of uh, utilities that I have copied over from the Atari DOS 2.0 disk on apps, which are different FujiNet utilities that we're going to use to connect to remote network resources using our end device and uh, to take and copy stuff over. If we look on drive two, we'll see that we have an empty directory, but with a few less sectors than usual. So normally DOS 2.0 disks come formatted with 707 sectors free. There's a whole bunch of reasons why it's 707 versus 708, but there we go. It's a few less because the game box has now taken up the first chunk of the start of the disk. But that's fine. It's blocked those off so we can't overwrite them and so we can copy our games directly on. How do we get started? Well, recall that we've got these utilities that I've copied over here, and these are pretty much all of them that you need. I mean, you can argue that you could also want FNU so you could create new disk images uh, and other things, but you know, this is a good subset to get started. We'll start by using the ncd command to go uh, into a network resource of some sort. These don't have extenders. And this is so that you can literally just load and type the name of the utility and there it is. We can say, okay, enter prefix or return to clear. In our case, we want to set a particular network prefix. Now this is the, the end device has, you can think of them as URLs because that's what they are. And URLs tend to be long and you don't want to type them all the time. So you can use the ncd command to help you. We can start, for example, by going and using the uh, ENFS and going into serata.online. We can press return. That prefix is now set. Now, if we if we use in PWD, we can see that that prefix is now set. What does this mean? Well, what happens if we do an in directory? We can see that we're at the top of apps errata.online, which we saw earlier, except now we're in DOS 2 and we can see it from here. I want to take a small aside and say the reason that we're using these tools here in DOS 2 has to do with the fact that of how the disk utility package loads. The disk utility package on DOS 2.0 loads in such a way that if we were to use the end device handler like we could with other DOSs, uh, DOS, the disk utility package would overwrite the memory being used by the end handler, making it not usable while inside the disk utility package here. So we can't use that here. It's why I created these tools to work around that fact. Continuing on, we'll go ahead and run in CD again. And this time, we're going to go to Atari 8-bit. And I'm doing this every step of the way so you can see how this all fits together. As we continue on, I will start omitting some of these steps to make things a bit faster. But here we go. Like now, we'll go to NCD. I happen to know that there's a games folder, and inside that games folder, there's HomeSoft. If we 
run in directory again, we'll see the top level directory for HomeSoft with everything in nice alphabetized sets. Now let's go in, let's have a little look here and start using some more advanced bits and pieces. So right now I want to look and I want to see if I can find Congo Bongo. We can go wildcard and there it is right there. Just showing those two files matching. Great, huh? Okay. Well, let's start off by copying over a copy of Congo Bongo because why not? I'll use the Congo Bongo without the title because it's smaller. It's the same game anyway. We'll take and load and use for the first time our nCopy command. Net copy from two. No problem. So in C Congo Bongo XEX. I'm going to copy it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, like that. So now we are seeing the game being copied over the network onto our disk image that's in drive two. And because of how the TNFS file, the TNFS adapter works, it has to do this in 512 byte chunks. This is a point for future optimization because other protocol adapters don't have to do this. Okay. So now if we take a look, we can, if we look on drive two now using the A command, we'll see that our game is sitting there in drive two, Congo Bongo ready to go, and we can continue the process. Let's start by taking and pulling some other stuff in here. Why not? Let's take and see if, uh, Let's see if Shadow World is here in HomeSoft. Oh, there it is, right there. 12K, yeah, we can throw that on there. Sure, no problem. And you'll notice that with these particular utilities, uh, these particular utilities are the Fujinet command line utilities can, can be used under any DOS. Uh, under Sparta DOS, you get command line parameters, and under DOS 2, you get interactive parameters. And, under, and it's loaded in such a way that this utility is outside of the scope of uh, the disk utility package. So if you're using DOS2 and you don't overwrite the disk utility package in memory, it will simply jump back to it. It's very convenient. You'll notice I'm not having to reload DOS every single time one of these utilities quits. It's a very nice feature. But with that, we'll go ahead and run in copy again. And we'll take him. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, I'm cop counting in my head the number of characters. Seven, eight, yeah, something like that. Okay. And so on. Maybe another one from the S directory here. How about, and I can I can probably guess, I'll just run in dir to be absolutely sure. How about Snakebite? Yeah, and it's named exactly as we think it is. Okay, great. We'll take and load it in. And you'll notice that because we use the ncd command here, I don't have to type out that long URL every single time. We'll just take and crunch it down like that. We have to keep in mind that when we're transferring from a 
network endpoint here that can have nice long file names to something like an Atari disk, we have to do the file name translation ourselves and crunch and crunch it down into eight characters with a three character extension because that's what the file system does. And you'll notice here that because I did a raw wildcard here, it decided to take and crunch and crunch it down. And the FujiNet actually helped us out here by calling, by giving this a, uh, a crunched file name. So yes, you can do, uh, you can do, you can do wildcards. So let's see how we're doing here on, on the disk space front. Well, we're about halfway there. Okay, well, let's, let's start, let's continue. But you can see that we started putting files on the disk here and we're just going to keep doing this until it fills up um do i have uh let's see snake conga bunga hold on what i've got on here oh um can I... oh yeah crazy shootout maybe we want that let's take and load that in we find out where it is and maybe in directory in A. I know it's K dash, so let's just see what we got here. K star patrol, K raisy antics, K raisy shootout. So we can go ahead, for example, and say K raisy shootout, sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sure. Oop. And you'll see that right here we got an error 144, and that's because the command was invalid. In our case, it couldn't find the file, but it didn't know enough to take and send back that it couldn't find the file here. So we'll take and do it again. Do this again. And we'll see that we're just, you know, copying right along. Okay. All right, 315. And we'll just we'll just add some we'll do another thing here. So we've copied a handful of games here. We're using half of the space. Um, you know, I mean, fine. Um, let's see what else can we do here. I'm gonna add some more. We, we can take and, for example, go find something else to throw in here from another source entirely. We'll use the ncd command to do so, and we'll do a whole new path. Since I'm starting with a whole new URL with a protocol adapter on the front of it and everything, it will reset it entirely so that the next time that we do a directory listing, we see that now we're looking at an FTP server. Stuff, collections, home, CD, homes, too. And I happen to know exactly where this is. So I can put a directory direct right to it. And we can see that we're sitting inside of a directory deep within an FTP server. And you see that the Atari is really none the wiser. I see frog.execute that just scrolled up there and I want to take and pull that one across because we can. Wait for the directory entry, uh, directory listing to finish here. And this is essentially a 
if you followed the directory path that I went to, this is a backup of all of the Antic disks for the year 1988, all the programs that were on them. And we're gonna take and pull a copy of Frog Execute, which is like a game of frogs and flies, and put that on here as well. So we'll take that, load the mcopy command, Put that and you'll see the beep is longer here because the FTP's uh, protocol adapter can do larger transfers and there we go and now that just came from an FTP server so we have that we can still put some more on here why not let's just do this I mean we're here we're here for the whole haul. We might as well. So I'll use NCD again to go back to DNFS app serata dot online Atari eight bit. Games on saw. And we will take and load in copy. And we'll just take and copy something maybe a bit bigger here. I don't know. What are we going to do? What do we want to do? I'll do amphibian. I think that's what it's called. We shall see. Something interesting happened there. So what happened? Hmm. Did we lose our, did we lose? No, we didn't. Just our, oh, that's because I tried to use the end device from inside DOS 2. It's not there anymore. So that's my bad. That's what happens anyway. It's a good indicate. It's a good example of what happens if you forget that. We'll use end copy again. So we'll take that and put that on drive two. Sure, why not? So even if you didn't know the whole thing, you can still use the wildcard here to help you out. And here we go. So counting down. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six games is good enough. We can end with that. Why not? So we'll end here and we will go right back, swap back in. Yes, go. Disc two is sitting in there. Okay, sure. Put that back. Yes, well. Game box is in here. Let's just boot into game box. And for that, I'll use the M trick E477, which is the cold start vector. So I don't have to turn my machine off and back on again. We'll just boot. Now we'll go ahead, immediately swap in our disk. Yes, go. And we'll go ahead and read the disk directory. We can see our games right there. We're going to use a convenience feature called create game directory from disk directory. And if we look at the game directory now, we'll see our games right there. We'll start modifying them. So let's modify that game directory. Game directory. Bongo Bongo, sure. Game number two. Uh-huh. Snake bite. And because we, we have all this thing, Boom, okay, five is frog. We don't need to change it, but there we go anyway. Amphibian, there we go. So now these games are there, they're ready to go. Bam, it writes them to the disc, and if we read them, we can see our new game box entries here.
all nice and ready to go. At this point, the game disc is finished. We can hit end, come back out. And because we still have the game box in drive one here, when I press option to boot, it will boot right into it. And there we go. Welcome to the game box. We have a game, we have a game image here, ready to go. There's our game. Ready to go. Doing good. So, and you can see, loads up really fast. The Homesoft collection is great for this. you can see here it is it's working doing great playing our games putting them onto a disc just like we used to when we were kids how did i now now this brings us to the second part of this video how did i put together that uh this game box disc so that we could actually take and just jump off and do this well i'll show you I'll start by pressing the reset button on the FujiNet and then pressing the reset key, which will boot us into the FujiNet menu. At this point, I will go ahead and just empty out, empty out, clean up. And we're going to start with a copy of Atari DOS 2.0 with the FujiNet utilities in the drive here. Thing is we don't have to have a local copy of this and this is important because we can just load it right off of the network and as i improve the fujinet utilities i update these dos disks with the latest versions of these utilities go into the atari 8-bit folder go into the dos folder and then we choose our atari dos 2.0s because you know why not? I'm going to do this next step. Because I created the other disk image inside of config, I'm going to do this one using the fnu command out here in DOS2. This is the directory for, for uh, the DOS2 version of the FujiNet tools here, containing the in handler, containing the uh, containing all the uh, in tools ready to go, DOS, etc., ready to go. One of these tools is FNU. And all we have to do now is pick a particular disk type. In this case, we want a single density disk. Sorry. And yeah, I forgot. Yeah, we have to do this all at once. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> so one, comma, and then the device that we want to take and do. Sorry. So we want to put this in drive two. We want to put this in our SD card slot, which is slot one. But wait, how do we know this? We'll just hit the break key and I'll show you. Uh, if we do an FLH, we can see the slots that we have active and the slot that we want to use is our local SD card slot. That's host slot one. But we can also use FLD to see what disks are actually available in the host slots. No problem. We'll use the F new command this time, knowing what we know to put something in slot in 
device two, post slot number one, disk type number one, with the name of DBATR, like that. So now we have uh, D2, one, write read, uh, write, read, write mode, GBATR, it's there. Now, if we look at what's there, you'll see it's empty. No file system formatted on it or anything. So let's fix that. So now it's there, it's ready to be used, and we can write our DOS files to it. There we go, we look, a bootable DOS disk, ready to go. This brings us to our next thing, what we absolutely need to do. Well, over on my file server, I have a utility disk that has the game box stuff on it. And if I look at FLH, FL, uh, FLH again, my server is called TMA2 and that's host slot number six. We use FLS. Sorry, FL FLS. Try that one more time. We can see it's called util 01 batr sitting on my file, just sitting on my local file server here. No problem. Let's use F mount to mount it. So we have the Atari DOS in drive one, our blank DOS in drive two, and we need to put the game box utilities in drive three. So for that drive three, we want to pull that from host slot number six, like we said before. We want to do it read write and call it and you'll see that this is now mounted in drive three. We look in drive three, there it is. There's the game box dot object. And there are others too. There's bed menu object, etc. Some other things here, but the one that we're interested in is game box dot object. All we have to do is copy that off. And call it auto run dot sys. And in fact, that's all we have to do to make this thing automatically boot into our game box, like our game box environment here. But we want to take and use some useful utilities too. So let's copy some useful utilities over into our new game box disk. And in fact, we'll actually take and uh, copy all the end utilities here over into that new over into that new disk. Because why the hell not? Uh, we say D copy from D3 or D1 in star dot star and copy that to drive two. Is why the hell not? Some of these you might want to use, some of them not. It's all entirely up to your discretion. So now we'll go ahead and while we're here as well, FL, we'll copy the, the FL, FL tools. And we'll copy those over as well.
and we'll copy over if new. Now see there any are there any F tools that I'm missing? Hmm. So let's see. F mount. Okay, F L D. F L H F L H F mount. And yeah. F mount and F new. I think that's pretty much what I need. Let's have a look. I'll copy F eject and F post as well. So what do we got here? We have ourselves a fairly complete set of utilities disks, all on one page even, so this works out rather quite well. We'll finish off the disk by locking everything on the disk, because why the hell not? So, so we don't accidentally delete anything. So there we go, files locked, everything good, and we can test the disk and see if it works by quickly swapping it into the drive, using our disk swap again. I'll use the E477 trick again. And we can see that we booted into our game box handler. And if we go ahead and end and hit select to go into DOS. We wind up in our DOS menu here, and if we do something like we can we can check the status of our disks, or no problem. Right now it's sitting here. Okay, this looks good to me, uh, and we can continue the process over again as we see fit. So I'm going to see go go ahead and end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope. Uh, that this brings a little bit more light into the power of the end device and I will be making more of these videos as time goes on just to prove the point so that people understand people start to understand the flexibility of what's available with the FujiNet and how it can be used to make your retro computing hobby that much more enjoyable so with that presentation here I hope you guys had a good time here. Um, keep watching for more videos, and uh, as always, have fun.